Hi guys, this is the tutorial for Wednesday's homework concerning skill worksheet number 12. I know if you already watched skill worksheet number 11's tutorial, I said skill worksheet number 12, but I meant skill worksheet number 11. So this one really is for skill worksheet number 12. Uh, however, it is extremely related to the homework I gave on Monday. Considering the fact that it's about percentages again, uh, of course we know percent means out of 100. So here's the deal. In this worksheet, my primary concern, or our primary concern, is to be able to change from a percentage to a fraction and into a decimal and, 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 and in any which order we want to do this. So uh, I'll start by looking at a few of the exercises now. I'm very aware that I assigned numbers 2 through 18 evens. Uh, and I am going to demonstrate some of the odd problems, so I know some of you are groaning at this point saying, oh, well, he gave us answers on Monday's homework. Well, I, I apologize, but here we go. Uh, a few of the odd exercises. Starting with number one, here's what they're asking us to do. They're going to give you a percent, and they want you to write it as a fraction as a, and as a decimal. Uh, our best bet is to go with fraction first, and here's the reason why. If 80% means 80 out of 100, it's not very hard to kind of have to think about this fraction here. It literally means... 80 out of 100. Now here's the kicker on this assignment, and, and this is really what makes it hard. I shouldn't say hard. This is what makes it a little bit more work. If you notice in the instructions, I hope you read them, it says express this fraction in simplest form. Look, here's the deal. We have to know how to state this in simplest form, and noticing that these are both even, uh, you know what, I've got to work on these. At least divide them both by two. Now what would be awesome is if we could find a greatest common factor between these. So. Here's what I challenge you to do at this point, is think of a number that divides into 80 and also into 100, but we want to think of the largest possible number. And if you haven't thought of it yet, that number is 20. But hey, just to show you that this can work, here's what we'll do. We'll just keep splitting these in half. It's not a bad thing. I say, well, half of 80 is 40, half of 100 is 50, and I say, well, hey, these are both even, but you know what, they also both end in zero. Something we could have done to begin with is divide them both by five. Okay, dividing these both by five, we get 8 on top, 10 on bottom. I say, well, hey, these are both even. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And I say, well, you know what? I notice 5 is prime. And it doesn't go into 4, so here's what I know. 4 fifths is the same as saying 80 out of 100. Now, you're going to write 80 out of 100 on your paper, or at least you're not doing number 1, but if you were, you would be writing this. And you're absolutely correct, but I'm going to tell you this. If you do not simplify your fractions, which occurs on, like, the first three that you do, then I do have to count you wrong, and especially on the DMCT, which we all want to do well on. Okay, so 4 fifths. Now, uh, changing this to a decimal, of course, we know we can divide 4, divide 4 by 5, but here's the cool thing about it. This is 80 out of 100 or 80 one hundredths. Here's all we need to do. Uh, a quick, simple way to put it is, wherever the decimal is on the percentage, let's just scooch it back twice to the left. So this becomes 0 0.80. But just to show you here and really rub it in is the fact that this is 80 one hundredths. This is the hundredth spot. So not a hard thing to do. If somebody gives you a decimal and they want, or a percentage, they want a decimal, we'll scooch it twice back to the left. Kind of like backwards, what we've been doing a lot is taking a decimal and switching it into a percentage by scooching the decimal twice to the right. Okay, uh, moving on, looking at number seven, here's what they'd like for you to do is actually tell you what percent that this represents. Now we say three out of ten. Well, we'd like this to be out of a hundred. Kind of like Monday's homework, one cool thing we could do is actually uh, use a scale factor to scale this up to be a hundred. I'm going to do this because, one, scale factors are really simple with equal ratios or a proportion, uh, and two, 10 uh, really goes into 100 very easily. I know that 100 is 10 times bigger than 10, so this number or this percent will also be 10 times bigger than 3. 3 times 10 is 30, so just looking at this and kind of using the dove factor here, I could tell you this is 30 one hundredths or, um, come on, 30%. Okay, so 30%. Now, I wanted to look at number 17 for a very good reason, and the reason why is this. Um, I could scale this up to be 100. Now, I wouldn't expect many people, except math geeks like myself, to be able to tell you right off the top of their head what you could take eight times to get 100 very, very easily. So here's the other technique that we have used in the past. If we want to turn a fraction into a percent, the easiest way to do this beside the scale factor is to take this numerator and divide it by the denominator. At this point, I guess I would say I'll raise you, but here's what we need to know. First things first, this number on top is being divided. It's the, the excuse me, dividend. So 
We'll put it inside the box. We'll put the 8 on the outside of the box. And just like you're used to, if this is a proper fraction, of course, it's going to be a decimal because 8 will not go into 1. It goes in this many times. So what we'll do is we'll build on a decimal and we'll continue to pursue this. Now, we're going to have to divide three times here, but I want to show you something kind of neat about this one. 8 goes into 10 one time. Of course, 1 times 8 is 8, and there will be 2 left over. And continuing with this, we might say 8 goes into 20. Well, 3 would be 24. 3 times 8 is 24. That's too much. So, how about twice? 2 times 8 okay, is 16. Of course, we have a remainder of 4, so we do need to keep going. So, going on, this is the cool thing. 8 goes into 40 awesomely. It goes in 5 times. So, we put a 5. If you wanted to be thorough or, you know, really obsessive compulsive, you could say 8 times 5 is 40. 40 minus 40 is 0. But come on, we know this is going to happen. Now, I look at this and I say, well, what percent is this? On this paper, the neat thing is, it says, could you give me the percent, round it off to the nearest 100. Okay, using our superb rounding skills, we would underline the 100th spot, draw an arrow to the right, and notice that this number is between 5 and 9, which would require us to kick this 2 up one digit. So we say this would become approximately 13 hundredths or 13%. If you really wanted to be picky about this, and actually I would encourage you to do this, even though the instructions tell you to do otherwise, if you wanted to tell me that this was precisely 12.5% because you scooched the decimal twice to the right, you're awesome. Go ahead and do it. I don't mind. Hope this helps you with the homework.